to be like a five-year-old sign you've got on the front of this prop. No, it's not. It's actually a real sign and a current price as of yesterday. And that's 2012 AirVenture? Yes. How can you build an airplane that everybody else is selling for $120,000 and $150,000 for that kind of price? Basically, it's a, it's a proper production line environment, just like they do in the car industry. Pipistrilla are building 10 a month, and with that quantity, they can get better rates off the composite suppliers, uh, the ICOM for the instruments, for the, the radio, and so on. So they, they're getting quantity buys with scheduled delivery of 10 a month, every month for the next 12 months, and uh, that reflects in a cheaper purchase price. But are you taking anything away from the airplane? Are you still using a Rotax engine? It's got a Rotax 80 horsepower engine. It's got a uh, fixed pitch wooden propeller with, with uh, leading edge protection. It's got a radio, a transponder, a GPS, Garmin, ICOM and Garmin. It's got um, complete um, analog and digital instrument package. It's got artificial horizon. It's got a ballistic parachute. It's a you know, luggage rack. Um, it's, it's a complete package in this aircraft that's that's basically built around, you know, if we build 10 of them a month, we can do them 30% cheaper than if we're building two a month. I, I, just, I just find it hard to believe that you're able to produce, produce this airplane. I mean, this is not, this is a luxury airplane. I mean, That's it's right. Got the, it's, it's, top, got it's top end. Wing, it's got all composite construction. Yeah, it's top end. It's all carbon fiber, um, Kevlar mixture for its construction. It's, top, it's a top end aircraft, but because of the quantities we're doing it at, we're managing to get the uh, price down. Now, how long has the airplane actually been out of production now? Well, this is basically a, it's a modified version of the Virus, which has been out for more than 10 years. It shares the exact same fuselage as the Sinison Virus with some minor modifications, and the wings are different. Um, they're a shorter wingspan to fit into all of the US hangars, and the shorter wingspan um, gives you more sprightly performance compared to the glider version. So it's actually a very uh, manoeuvrable um, aircraft if you want it to do manoeuvres and otherwise it's quite stable. Now, I believe this is designed or being introduced to the training market. That's right. Market. That's why you're bringing We've it intentionally marketed it to training because I did a lot of uh, research with myself and others in the company and we, we went out and looked at all the flight schools, the one man operations and there's absolutely no way buying a plane that's worth more than $100,000 that can actually stay in business. There's only so many hours you can fly a month you want to get yourself a wage of, of $30,000 a year. After all expenses, you, were, you end up at about a $20,000 loss if you're buying a plane that's worth over $100,000 $100, a year. So by buying a cheaper aircraft, you can actually have, a, have yourself a decent business and earn an income at the same time. So let's have a look at the airplane then. We start at the front. What type of power are we using on it? Rotax 80 horsepower. Um, it's modified from standard to give it very good uh, cooling abilities. It's, it comes with an oil thermostat. The radiators move to a different location for all the other models, so it's got very good airflow. So you can sit on the ground talking to your student for many hours without the aircraft overheating. We've got a fixed pitch wooden propeller with a solid aluminium insert in the leading edge. This is all CNC machined by Pipistrel in house. The undercarriage is beefed up when you look and compare to the other models. It's a thicker section of undercarriage. The nose leg is also beefed up because we've intentionally designed this for the ab initio training market. Now, this is a tricycle gear. Are we using steerable nose wheel? Yeah, completely steerable nose wheel. We've simplified it. Instead of having differential brakes, we now just have one central brake lever which brakes both wheels at the same time. Um, the steering on it is so good that you don't really need differential brakes. It just overcomplicates the uh, the installation and makes it more expensive. Now, how are you bringing the airplane out to the market? Is it coming through as an experimental, as a light sport aircraft? No, this is light sport. They're made in they're made in a Pipistrel factory in Italy. Um, they come over. They're all test flown and everything uh, in in the U in uh, Italy. They come to the U.S. We refit the wings, get the certificate of airworthiness, and off they go. So let's have a look at the interior of the airplane now. Yep. You're what, uh, 230, 240 pounds? Um, I'm six foot two and about 265. 265? So yeah, a fair bit overweight, but uh, I can still fit quite comfortably in the cabin. We've got adequate headroom so I can have headsets on without hitting the roof. We've introduced a, spatted, a padded spa cover to the Alpha because there's new people getting in, students, they're gonna hit their heads. So now we've, we've padded all the top section and uh, we've made the aircraft more robust, things like rubber mats instead of carpet. We've got a different seat fabric which is guaranteed to last about 15 years. 
So we've we've made the aircraft much more durable. Now it looks like you've also got a, a bubble style door to it, a little more. Slightly, right? slightly uh, bubble slight door, so it gives you an extra couple of inches um, on the side, and also allows you to get basically vertical view straight down the side when you're flying. Okay. And you've got uh, ventilation there as well. Really good ventilation, and, and things like uh, cabin heat um, comes as standard. The cabin heat comes off the water radiator rather than the exhaust, so there's no chance of carbon monoxide. Okay. Now, uh, fuel capacity on the airplane, where is the fuel? The fuel's behind us. Normally Pipistrel carry fuel in the wings, but they now have a completely autonomous fuel tank in the back, which is independently mounted away from the airframe. So it holds um, just under 60 litres, which is about uh, 15 gallons, and uh, it's enough for four hours at cruise speed with 30 minutes reserve. And what kind of economy are you going to get out of that 80 horsepower? We, at, at, at 108 knot cruise, we're burning about 3. Point, uh, 3.5 gallons per hour, and um, in circuits uh, just over 2 gallons, because it's it's like a glider in its, its circuit pattern. We, we go basically to idle on downwind and the whole rest of the circuit is flown at idle. So it's very economical. Now are we losing anything in climb rate and that type using the 80 horse engine? 1200 feet a minute at maximum takeoff weight. And this aircraft with full fuel still has a payload of just over 500 pounds. So you can have, you can have full fuel and two people almost my size sitting side by side and you're still within limits. Now is there any storage capacity for somebody yes. that wants to do yep. a little cross country? Yeah, we've designed it so we've got storage capacity behind the seats. On one side we've got the ballistic parachute, uh, we've got the fuel tank at the back and on this side we've got a hard area, a, a floor of the aircraft which gives you um, enough storage area. In, in this one now we've got all of the aircraft manuals and four boxes of headsets and they fit in there still with room to spare so it is actually quite large. It's limited to um, 20 pounds capacity. Because this is a really a training aircraft, it's only designed to carry a first aid kit, some tie downs, a couple of bottles of water. It's not, uh, it hasn't been designed as a cross country touring aircraft because our other models fill that role much better than this aircraft would. Now, is this the standard instrument type of package that yes. would come with the airplane? One of the reasons that the Alpha is, is such a good price is because um, everything is built the same. Everything is identical, there's no changes you can make to it. Now these, these are just firing up. What we have here is a fantastic um, system of instruments developed purely for this aircraft and it's a combination of analog and digital. So for example on the airspeed indicator we've got a needle here which goes around just like a conventional um, airspeed indicator and we also have in, in letters which are about uh, 14 millimeters, which is over half an inch tall the airspeed in knots indicated airspeed. We have an artificial horizon, it also has uh, backup for airspeed and vertical speed and everything in there. Over here we've got a, a altimeter which will give you flight level, um, altitude and you can adjust the Q&H with a little knob on the side here to adjust it. Here is our electric trim which you honestly don't use very often in the aircraft. It's pretty uh, pretty neutral in its trim, the only time you really use it is for high speed cruise. We have all of our engine instruments and monitoring on this side, um, also with a data recorder. So if you've got an aeroplane out in service that might have 50 hours and download the information from all of these instruments, they all come back to this, this one unit in the middle here with a mini micro SD card. So we can pull that out and we can see what the engine operation was for up to seven hours before the actual incident. So if, if it was running with low oil pressure or um, the, the temperatures were too high, we can see what caused the failure. So it's really quite good. We also have a vertical speed indicator, which also gives you a flight time. So from when you took off and also UTC time, Zulu time. And finally, we have the TACO, which has a, an hour meter. And um, the TACO is displayed analog and digital as well. Then of course Transponder, Garmin, ICOM 210 radio, we have a Garmin 327 GPS, we've got a, a Canard DLT in the back, so it comes with a beacon, and uh, as you see this is exactly how every one of them is delivered. Rubber floor mats, durable seats, full dual controls, uh, the flaps which has been simplified, most Pipistrel aircraft have four or five flap settings, but we've simplified this one to just one um, one central stick with, with three settings, um, neutral, 15 degrees and 25 degrees. 
the braking system has been simplified. With this you just pull it up, push the pin down and that acts as a parking brake which you can use for your run-ups when you want to release it. Just pull it up and it, it springs up and off you go. Adjusted. We've got one knob here with a cable attached to it. Now if I get in and I'm a shorty, all I do is I just pull the cable back like that and it pulls the pedals back and they lock into position about every inch. And if I want to make the pedals go further away, I just pull this again just to release the pin and then push back with my feet and I can make it go back out to suit someone that's over six foot tall again. So very, very simple and in flight. So if somebody wanted to get in uh, contact with you for this airplane or some of the others, what's the easiest way to do that? Um, really, like everything now, go to the website and uh, pipistrel-usa.com and you'll get all the contact information of our dealer network across the states. Um, all the information on the pay on the aircraft, we can download uh, movies through YouTube. Um, anything is all is possible now to make contact with us.